for an in-depth analysis of Betu of Fatu Ben Suda's tenure as ICC prosecutor, head of the African Center for International Criminal Justice, Kwakwe Giman Budu, joins me now. Thank you so much for joining us on New Central now. Thank you, and thanks for having me. All right, let's go straight. How will you assess her performance so far as a watch, as prosecutor for the International Criminal Court? What's the assessment so far? I mean, first and foremost, uh, we have to congratulate um, Madame Fatou Bensouda, um, first and foremost, for completing her nine-year um, term or her nine-year tenure. Um, and being an African and being the first um, prosecutor from Africa to um, be the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. Um, a, a lot was expected. Uh, obviously, there were controversies there. There were some um, who felt that um, she was being put there to basically do the bidding of the Western powers because the ICC has been seen since, since its establishment as anti-African or targeting African leaders and only prosecuting African crimes of an international character and things of that sort. I think to a large extent she's been able to dispel that and um, considering what she has superintended over and some of her focal areas, aside away from the prosecution aspect, advocating for um, sexual offenses and uh, the prosecution of um, sexual gender-based violence and things of that sort. I think her legacy is one that um, we can reflect on and see that she did her best, put in her best um, towards the ending of impunity or curbing immunity everywhere in the world and in Africa in particular. And so if I'm um, to assess what her tenure has been like, I would say it's been, there has been some controversies, um, but overall, I think she has, um, she, she has done her best and she's, she's dispatched her duties or done what she was able to do in a fair and dispassionate manner. And I don't think anybody can take uh, that away from her, her integrity and the fact that she brought a renewed zeal towards the fight against impunity across the world and across Africa as well. All right, now, Kwaku, we're talking about uh, controversies and the spelling rumors of being anti-African. According to reports during her tenure, all of those tried in 12 cases. 12 cases were Africans. We have the Kenyan president, Uhuru Kenyatta. We also had his deputy, William Ruto, being tried. Is it true that the ICC is unfairly targeting Africans? Uh, first and foremost, this is, this is something that has been repeated so often that it sounds as though it's the truth. The reality is, if you go back to 1998, um, when the Rome Statutes, the, during the negotiations that led to the adoption of the Rome Statutes, which established the International Criminal Court, if you go back then, you realize that African states represented the largest bloc of states that were advocating for and pushing for the establishment of a permanent international criminal court. Hitherto, there had been um, ad hoc tribunals. For instance, the tribunal that was established in the aftermath of the Rwandan, um, what's become referred to as the Rwandan genocide of 1994. There was an ICTR, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, that was established. Prior to that, there was the Balkans issue um, involving the former Yugoslavia. So it was the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia also established. So there were ad hoc courts that were established after the fact to deal with the most heinous international crimes. And what the ICC represented, at least, to the states that were pushing for its establishment, including the African states that represented the majority bloc at that particular point in time, was to have a permanent court that would deal with atrocity crimes, like crimes against humanity, genocide, war crimes. And so fast forward 2002, the ICC um, becomes operational. And when it becomes operational, because of the sheer number of states in Africa that had actually ratified the Rome Statute and under international law were bound by the dictates of the Rome Statute, the, there's a trend that began or something interesting began. So even though we're saying that a lot of the cases during her tenure emanated from Africa, if you do a close audit or you, you look at the cases carefully, you'd realize that close to about 90% or 80, between 80 and 90% of those cases that we're talking about were actually state referrals. And what state referrals means is that the states themselves, the African states themselves, 
will refer a situation going on in their country to the International Criminal Court to investigate. So for instance, in 2003 or 2004, thereabouts, um, Yoweri Museveni, um, the president of Uganda, referred the situation related to the Lord's Resistance Army and Joseph Kony, its leader, to the International Criminal Court to investigate and prosecute. And the court did investigate, the prosecutor did investigate, initiated um, proceedings, charges were brought against Joseph Kony, as well as some other members of the LRA and so on and so forth. So a lot of these cases actually came from the African states. And we need to emphasize the point that there are three main ways in which you invoke the ICC's jurisdiction. But first and foremost, we need to understand that the International Criminal Court is a court of last resort. The states who are parties to the Rome Statutes, as the statutes establishing the International Criminal Court by virtue of the Rome Statute, have a duty to prosecute those atrocity crimes, crimes okay. against humanity, genocide, war crimes, in their jurisdiction. All right, it's when they are able to... Yes. Pog, you've given you've given so many reasons as to why you would say that the ICC has not been uh, um, fair to the Africans. But let's look at this issue now. The immediate U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has openly declared war on the investigations into allegations of war on Afghanistan. What would you say to this? That was um, so. So, how international law works, for instance, is that states who are not parties to treaties or statutes of this nature are not necessarily subject to the jurisdiction of the court. So technically speaking, if a state is not a party to a treaty, that okay. treaty can have, cannot have a binding effect on them. And the United States was one of the driving forces towards the establishment of the ICC, but then decided to revoke its membership so, or withdraw. So, Parker, would you say would you say quickly now, would you say it has not affected the uh, obligations of the ICC with this? Would you say that? What has not affected the obligations? Would you say would you say that this argument now of rather taking the criminal courts now against for the war against Afghanistan, would you say that this indictment would not affect the ICC? No, that's not what I'm saying. I, I was saying that they because they were not party to, but maybe let's let's just round um, okay. round. Okay. Um, Mike Pompeo was the former um, the Secretary of State. All right. You realize that when the new government, the Biden administration, came in, they revoked all that um, travel ban okay. and all those things. Were okay. Okay. So those were fetters against the ICC actually doing its job, and a lot all right. of um, states. Okay, Quaco. Um, Okay, yes. thank you so much for clearing all those controversies and thank you for having us, or rather, coming on the news with us. Thank you. Thank you.